Continuing on with this question, part D, we're asked, what do you notice about the average rates of change for the function e of t? Well, if you go back and look at all the values that were computed in A, B, and C in the previous video, all of the rates were the same, and that was negative 77.2 feet per year. Let's take a minute and draw a good graph of the function e of t with all appropriate labels. I'm going to pause the video and do that myself, so it's just going to appear here in a second. I recommend that you pause the video, try to draw your own good graph, and then compare it with what you'll see on the screen shortly. All of the items that I've drawn here or written here need to be contained in your graph so that you have drawn a good graph. And let's see what those are. We need to label our horizontal and vertical axis completely, including tick marks that are evenly spaced. Notice I'm spacing by threes on the horizontal and by fours on the vertical. That's okay as long as you're consistent between the horizontal and the vertical. You should label your tick marks. You should plot a representative sample of ordered pairs from the data set that you're given. Any ordered pair that you plot should be labeled as I've done here. Notice that my graph does not begin or extend beyond the data set that I'm given. I can't make assumptions right now about what happens here or what happened here, so I'm limited to a universe that starts with an input of zero and ends with an input of six. These are all of the elements that should be contained in every good graph that you draw for this class. So let's see what we can tell from this good graph. First of all, I'm gonna go back to my calculator and if I go to my y equals, I can see that I have my equation there. I'm going to hit graph and see if I get something similar. And I'm not going to get anything similar because my window is not going to show me the points that are on this function yet. So let me go to my window and change some values. I'm going to start my x min at 0 because I just talked about the universe that my equation lives in, 0 to 6. And then my y, I'm going to start at 0. And I'm going to take that up to 4,000. So take a look at those values there and make sure that they make sense. 0 to 6 for input, 0 to 4,000 viewing window for output. Now let's hit graph and see if we get a decent picture. We do, kind of. It's a little bit jumpy, but that is because, see how our graph here started at 3350? So let's go back to our window and make our y min instead of zero. Let's make it 30, this one then would be 3250 actually. And let's see if we get something that looks closer to what we have. There we go. So when you start, so notice this is 0 to 3350. That's not an, you know, an appropriate interval. Make a little note here with some squiggly lines because that means that this whole part of your graph is missing, but that's okay because this is the part that we care about. So what we notice is that because the average rate of change is constant for the data, we have a linear function. That's what our graph is. We have a linear function. The slope is negative 77.2, and that is confirmed by our equation. Average rate of change then and slope are the very same thing.